Hello and welcome to this presentation where we're going to take a look at the structure of the many economics degrees here at Bristol as well as some of the options on offer. My name is Dr Annika Johnson, I'm a lecturer here in economics um, and just to warn you this video is going to focus in particular on our joint programmes. Um, so that's economics with uh, and politics, philosophy, management and accounting. Okay, so let's start by talking about the structure of the degrees over the three years of your programme, and then later I'll tell you a little bit more about how it's taught and assessed and give you an idea of some of the optional units available. So here's most of our degree programmes, all nicely summarised on one page. Along the top there you can see the various single and joint honours programmes that we offer, and along the shorter side you can see how they differ as you progress through the degree. There's a lot of information here though, so let's focus on BSc Economics and Philosophy for an example. Um, as I say, this is just an example um, of a joint degree programme, um, but this structure is very similar to the others, so we'll start here and then we'll compare to the others again later on. Um, and again, let's start by looking at what happens in year one. So the purpose of the first year is to make sure that you have a really solid foundation in all the key skills that you're going to need for both of your subjects. So in all the programmes I'm focusing on in this video, 50% of what you study in the first year comes from economics, and 50% from your second discipline, so philosophy in this example, or management or accounting or politics. In the economics units, what happens is you take a year-long course which covers both microeconomics and macroeconomics, but you'll also study maths and stats, and in this you'll use some of the tools you're probably really familiar with, like calculus or probability and statistics. And the purpose of that is so that you can build on those skills and make sure that you're ready to start in the second year the unit on econometrics. If you've watched some of the other presentations um, on our visit day site, then you'll know that econometrics is a very big part of Bristol economics. And that's simply because it's really one of the most valuable skills for a modern economist to have. So that's why in year two, you complete this course in applied econometrics, um, as alongside continuing micro and macro. And the reason is that it's really important for understanding how economists use data and test models and it means that you're able to read and understand and really fully engage with all the economics options and research that um, you read about during your third year. And we can see that as you move into your third year, what happens is you now have a lot more freedom and a lot more choice. By this point, you've now built all the necessary foundations in economics and your second discipline, to be able to apply your knowledge and focus on the areas of the subject which really interest you the most. So, for example, in economics, you might choose to focus on environmental economics or behavioural economics and so on. I'll give you more of an idea of the sorts of options that are available later on. Typically, in the final year of a joint degree, half your units will come from economics and half will come from your second subject area. As I say, there are lots of options to choose from, um, but I'll give you an idea of the sorts of things um, students have taken in the past in the final section of this video. But that gives you an idea of what a joint degree in, in economics looks like and how it evolves over the three years. You can see that as you build competency in the core units, you get more and more choice as you go through the degree. Obviously, I've used economics and philosophy as the example there, but the structure of the other joint programmes is very similar, at least from an economics perspective. You can see that across the accounting, management, politics and philosophy programmes, the economics units and options all stay the same. Um, although obviously what you study in your non-economic subject is a little bit different. If you want to see the difference between these and the single honours uh, economics programmes, we can add these here on the left. So you can see that the maths and econometrics units, which are those ones in light blue, are a bit bigger on the single honours programmes. Um, there's also a few more economics and finance options, particularly in the earlier years of the degree. Um, and that just means that whilst in the single honours courses you're able to add more depth in terms of more economics, 
Um, those degrees don't necessarily have the same breadth as the joint degree programmes where you study two disciplines. OK, so that's it for the general structure. Now let's think a little bit about how this degree is taught and assessed. So for this I'm going to use an example from BSc Economics and Politics, but again, from an economics perspective, it's similar across the different joint programmes. So you're asked to take 120 credit points per year. What does that mean? Well, it translates roughly into taking six units across the year, um, normally three per term. So the idea is that each term you would take some economics and some politics, or management or philosophy or accounting. A unit is typically taught through a combination of lectures and small group classes, with roughly two to four hours of lectures, plus an hour small group class each week. Not all units are the same though, um, and so you should be aware that some might have more workshops with um, sort of exercises and activities to complete, or um, different styles of teaching which are in some way uh, just more appropriate to the unit content. Um, so you can imagine, for example, if you did a third year dissertation in politics, then you'd have more one-to-one -one contact um, than um, you would typically have in a course, but you'd also have fewer lectures because you're undertaking an individual research project. So it does differ a little bit um, unit to unit. Assessment is largely done through exams, but there's also some coursework, and you can choose options which are more or less coursework heavy um, if you really want to. Economics and accounting tend to have more exam-focused options, although there are a few coursework ones as well. Um, uh, whereas politics, philosophy and management, um, in those you're more likely to come across a wider range of coursework options. And if all that's not enough to keep you busy, then there's a lot of other sessions and support available to you as well. Every lecturer or class tutor, anyone who teaches you, will hold weekly office hours, um, where you can go and you can ask questions about things you're unsure about, um, or things you'd like to recap from lectures and so on. You'll also find other things like revision sessions take place throughout the year. There's a regular student seminar series with various visiting speakers. There's employability sessions and so on. And then, of course, there's all the clubs and society activity that you might choose to do as well. So there's really no need to worry here about having too much time on your hands. There's definitely more than enough here to keep you very busy if you choose to fully engage with everything. OK, let's finally talk about those options. So there's a number of optional units available, particularly in the final year of your degree. Uh, a large number of these are going to come from economics, and that's what you can see here on the left. Um, we saw earlier how, you know, it, it, typically in the final year of your degree, 50% of your options are going to come from economics. This list here isn't exhaustive by any means. It's just some examples of what's been available to students in the past. But of course, you'll also choose from options in your second discipline as well, and you'll have a big list to choose from in that second discipline too. So, for example, if you take politics, you know, here's four examples of units that, that, that currently um, students might choose from, but it's also many, many more beyond that. The list will look slightly different for philosophy, obviously quite different again for management, um, and then we can see you also get a different set of options in accounting too. Um, so depending on what your second discipline is, you'll have a range of options suited to that subject. OK. If that's not enough for you, then there's also many other opportunities you can pursue while you're here. So most of our programmes, apart from economics and maths, offer a study abroad year with destinations all over the world. If you want a sort of study abroad experience but don't want to take the whole year to do it, then there's also a number of shorter summer programmes, such as the International Leadership Programme, um, for example. But if any of these sort of global opportunities or the idea of going abroad at all interests you, then I'd recommend you take a look at the Global Opportunities website. That's the link up there in the corner. And I suggest you have a browse to see the sort of range of opportunities available to students. Close to home, there's also the Professional Liaison Network, 
um, which will help you learn more about the working world and economics and industry through things such as the mentoring scheme, insight talks, internships. If you want to know more about that, then I recommend checking out our presentation on employability. And then finally, <laughs> uh, there are many other events and activities to explore as well. So, for example, the EFM Society is the largest student society in the university. They do a lot to help you settle into university life and to link you up with other students who have already studied your course for a little while. Um, and for example, if you like sport but don't want to compete at the ultra competitive university levels, then they have many teams which compete in the sort of far more relaxed intramural leagues. Those take places between, for example, residential halls or between different subjects. The department also runs lots of events, film nights, for example, with guest speakers, um, uh, where you sort of discuss the economics contents of the, the films and the, the issues that it raises. Um, and then obviously on top of that, there's also plenty of support for you to access from your personal tutor, from the wellbeing team and so on. So really there's a lot of people here who want to make sure this is a great experience and that there are lots of opportunities for you to uh, take hold of. It's really just for you to choose to go out and take it if you want to. Okay, that's it from me. I hope you found that useful. Make sure you check out um, our Visit Day website for more videos and information on economics here at Bristol. Thanks again. <laughs>